Hi there, my name's Tom, back talking about F1 Fantasy as per usual. We're heading into Zanvoort this weekend. Interesting weekend for sure in terms of F1 Fantasy. Lots of streaks going on, so we're going to have a look at how the streaks might be affecting my personal team selection. And obviously that might have an impact on what you're considering as well, just to stuff to bear in mind in general. I'm going to have a quick look at the spreadsheet, see what happened in FP1, FP2, because it's very important. Because there was quite a few questions going into this weekend as to, you know, are Red Bull actually going to run away with things? Are Ferrari, you know, are they back in the pack are they you know red bull left them behind or mercedes just dead and buried like there's lots of questions that i wanted answering and practice sessions were the best way to answer that really until we actually get quality in the race itself but obviously quality in the race comes after the deadline so not much help to us is it um but anyway yeah so we're gonna have a look at my a couple of different team builds um that i'm considering um and yeah go from there really uh, i will like to point out i've been feeling very ill the last couple of days so if you can hear it in my voice i'm sorry just had to put up fit for today. Um, let's let's get on with things. So let's have a look at FP1, FP2, and surprise, surprise, who we got FP in FP1 at the top? George Russell, followed closely by Lewis Hamilton. So Mercedes suddenly uh, on top of a one-two in FP1. We'll say Max Verstappen, you know, had that gearbox. I think it was a gearbox issue, um, which put him put him out of put him out of the running after just seven laps. So very limited information about Verstappen, unfortunately, from FP1. Uh, his teammate Perez, not great, to be honest, not impre not really impressive. In fact, he was, all, he was basically an entire second off George Russell in terms of pace. And if you also think what happened last year in Zandvoort, Perez went out in Q1. And I know that was traffic related, but still something to bear in mind that maybe Perez doesn't excel around this track particularly. And that could be a reason to drop the Red Bull constructor for Ferrari, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, anyway, going into FP2 as well, you see where's Perez? He's down in P12, so another pretty average to, well, considering the car he's in, that's a very below average performance. Um, and then you see Max Verstappen about three or four temps ahead of him. Now, generally speaking, you'd expect to see Verstappen three or four temps ahead of Perez. And so I think personally that that is fairly representative of the Red Bull at the moment. Uh, but, it, but it's also really baffling because then you've still got the Ferraris who are like seven temps ahead of Verstappen. So it's like... <sighs> A part of me thinks, oh, I'm going to completely change my team to wedge in as many Ferraris as I can and Mercedes and everything. Red Bull, are, you know, they're in the bin, they're in the trash can for Um But then when it comes to the actual race, like Verstappen's just going to blitz it and, you know, podium again. Um, <clears throat> like, can you really see Max Verstappen qualifying anywhere other than the top two, maybe three or four, like at a push? If, if he qualified out of the top four, I'd be shocked, even given the, the practice times. So Max Verstappen, like... He had a lot of catch up to do as well in the practice in the practice in FP2 because of what he missed out on in FP1. So I'm not sure how again how representative exactly these times are, but it's all we got to go on really at the moment. So you know, can Red Bull go from the most dominant race of their entire existence in Spa pretty much last weekend to not even like close to the podium? I just don't think it's going to happen. I think it's just too dramatic, and we can't read too much into practice session times. That said, I do actually have a build in mind which doesn't involve red bull at all so it's like you know go against my own advice but still and the, the reason why i'm not including red bull in one of those builds actually is because of the streaks which i'm going to talk about in a second uh, who else has impressed me lando norris you know mr consistent p4 p4 <clears throat> We'll see what happens in FP3 tomorrow. If he performs well again, then it's very likely he's going to be qualifying in that P4 sort of region. So, you know, he could be... If we're not happy with Perez, we can just drop Perez down to a Norris in our teams, for example. So Norris is definitely someone to keep an eye on. Unfortunately, he had his race streak last weekend in Spa, which he missed due to the grid penalty. Uh, so no streaks for Norris, but, you know, still a good chunk. You know, we could be looking at a 20, 25 pointer or something like that for Norris this weekend, which is absolutely fine considering his sort of price point. So yeah, Norris is interested in me. Stroll again, doing pretty decent. Uh, again, I don't expect him to qualify up here. Uh, even if he averaged like P6, I imagine him to drop down to like, P10, P11 by the time the qualifying comes around because the Aston Martin and Stroll in particular is just not good at qualifying. But I'm happy to keep him in the team. To be honest, it's just that sort of budget filler option. Um, but yeah, um, other than that, the Alpines were fine. Um, nothing exciting, but they were steady uh, and, you know, like up there around the top 10 sort of region. So yeah, fine. They're both on streaks as well. So it's something to bear in mind. Um, another good you know, mid-range sort of price, and they're both on streak, so both Ocon and Alonso are interesting for me this weekend as well. Other than that, the rest of the field kind of, you know, just filling in the bottom 10, not much interesting stuff going on there, to be honest. The hazards look unexciting. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is my team. <clears throat> uh, at the moment, this was the team I had from Spa. I literally just went with, like, the most expensive 
template I could basically, you know, at the beginning of the season the template was this, except Alonso was Bottas and Stroll was Magnussen, that was the template team to maximise the best teams in Ferrari and Red Bull. Now the budget's grown, that's why I've moved into the likes of Alonso and Stroll, just because they provide a bit better value than the likes of Bottas, particularly in the last few races, and the Haas drivers. Um, so yeah, I mean, a part of me also just kind of wants to stick with this team and just never make any substitutions and just stick with this team for the rest of the season. I actually genuinely think it might be kind of fine. But, you know, Zandvoort's quite a unique track. I wouldn't say, it's not completely unique. It's, there's similarities between Zandvoort and the Hungara Ring, for example. And if we think back to what happened in the Hungara Ring, Mercedes were very strong. Like Their race pace was very strong. George Russell got um, pole, pole position. And I think Lewis finished P2 in the end. Um, so yeah, I think Mercedes were well, clearly well suited to that style of track. And Zandvoort, in my opinion, is quite similar sort of style. Um, very windy, um, a few sort of slower slower corners um, to deal with in Zandvoort. Um, as well as some fast paced sort of sections so and not much of a straight and we know that Mercedes isn't great in a straight and you know there's only really one straight there is two DRS zones but there's only one real like proper straight which is you know down the, the start finish line so yeah Mercedes definitely interesting George Russell you know like I said he performed extremely well he's pretty consistent in recent times going from practice into qualifying and you know qualifying is important around here so we can predict where people are going to qualify that's very important for potential actual points at the end of the day because I imagine that where people qualify isn't going to be like ultra important like it maybe it was last year but it's still going to be important I think there will be some elements of overtaking possible this this uh, coming weekend but still I think qualifying is very very important that's why George Russell is very tempting so let's stick George Russell in there just uh you know just shove him in there over the clerk even though I think the clerk's still like a fine option but um out of the Ferrari drivers if I'm only going to have one this weekend I'm going to go with Carlos Sainz two reasons uh, he's on the quality streak and he's cheaper uh, you know it just means you can upgrade the rest of your team a bit better um, also Carlos Sainz is been particularly strong if we throw it back we look at uh, <coughs> FP1 he was in P3 he was quite far ahead of Leclerc how, how far ahead was he about three temps uh, that's quite a margin I, I suppose uh, yeah and then he was also only like literally what four thousands of a second uh, behind the clerk in FP2 so Carlos Sainz is on it this weekend and he's on the streak so just for me if you're only going one Ferrari driver I definitely have Carlos Sainz. There we go. Um, then if I was going to do this, then I could switch out the likes of Perez and move him down to Eva. Like I said a minute ago, like a Lando Norris. But that means I'd still need to find a bit of money from somewhere. But I could always swap down Stroll to a, a budget enabler, or I could even swap down Red Bull to the Ferrari. So also on the double streak. And I could see myself going with a team like this. And they, I've got four million in the bank here. Like, what am I doing? I should be spending all my money. And if I had an extra sub, I'd definitely like get rid of Stroll and bring in Ocon, who's on that streak. And if I could have a team like this, I would be extremely happy. But um, <clears throat> for minus ten, I just don't think it's worth switching Stroll for Ocon, because you know Ocon, the temptation to bring him in, I think he's a better driver anyway, <clears throat> a better asset anyway than Stroll. Um, but being on that race streak is very tempting to bring him in. But to take a minus 10, which basically negates that race streak, is kind of a bit like, eh, is there much point in doing that one? I think Stroll can still score me, you know, 10 to 15 points, whoever it is uh, he normally chugs along with. So yeah, if you've got the substitutions to get to a team like this, I think this this team in particular looks pretty insane. Um, this costs around 107 points something. I'm not doing I'm not doing maths right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got like the race streak, race streak, race streak, race streak, quali, quali, quali streak, and then Lando Norris who's performing well. So I really, really, if you can get to a team like this with no minus tens, I think we could be onto something. However, like I said, there's no red balls. So you know, how how are we if we go for, with a team like this? Are we falling into a big trap? Are we falling into a big trap where, you know, the Red Bulls have been so consistent, so reliable and so fast, particularly in the hands of Max Verstappen, if we don't have them in our team, are we going to be punished? However, because for me, oh, I'm just going to switch it back to Stroll just just for a second, just so you can say, because I'm not taking the minus 10, so I would go with a team like this if I was going for it. Um, however, you can see by the number of streaks that we've got in here. So we've got, if we add all this up, we've got... 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 points worth of potential streaks. So that's enough. I mean, that's equivalent to someone winning the race. If we go back to the spreadsheet quickly, we'll have a look at who, who won in Spa. 49 points for Max Verstappen. Let's go to Hungary. 55 points for Max Verstappen. We'll go to France, do one more. 45 points for Max Verstappen. So, yeah, that's my point. Like, these, these streaks can make up the entire... Uh, value of someone actually winning the race so you know going without Red Bull and going out going without 
Max Verstappen maybe isn't the craziest thing because it enables us to get all these crazy streaks in. Um, however, there is another team which does involve um, Max Verstappen, which I'm looking at, and I'm going to have a look at that just now. Okay, quick little edit there, and we're straight back into the next team selection, which is, again, involving quite a lot of streaks. It doesn't involve George Russell, which, you know, may be right, maybe wrong. Excuse me, this illness is really getting on top of me whilst I try to record. Um, <clears throat> but this, this team also gets me a bunch of streaks. It gives me both the Alpine streaks, if they can achieve it. And they've looked fairly promising um, in FP1, FP2. It uh, gives you the double Ferrari streak, gives you signs on his quality streak. And Verstappen, who I said, although he's not performed well in the practice so far, it's his home race. And I think he's going to come back stronger <clears throat> before the deadline, you know, before... Well, in FP3, I mean, and I think, yeah, I think he'll pull out the bag, to be honest, in uh, qualifying. So I'm tempted, very tempted to go over a team like this. The only reason I'm not over the moon of it is because it doesn't have George Russell, but then I can't have everyone. And the real temptation with George Russell is he's on the double streak, but, you know, with a team like this, I don't need someone on a double streak. They've already got streak, 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 streak. They've got, you know, it's it's fine. And you can't have everyone. I'm really sorry. I'm struggling here. <laughs> um <clears throat> Yeah, but so this is definitely a team that I'm considering as well. Involving Max Verstappen gives a bit of coverage. You could even, like, forget, you know, if you want to stick to Red Bull as a constructor, even though I think Ferrari are just a better pick, you could, like, drop down Ocon to a, to a has driver and then double up if you really think Red Bull are going to pull it through. But doing this means you do lo you do end up losing a bunch of streaks. So I just, I, yeah, I just, I'm not happy at that, to be honest. Like, Red Bull versus Ferrari this weekend, with Ferrari looking so strong in, in practice so far, it just seems too easy almost to just put Ferrari in and whether it's right or wrong um, I feel like that's what I'm going to be doing um, I've been <clears throat> very comfortable with Red Bull as a constructor for many weeks now and I'm very, you know they're quite they're quite low owned as well if we have a quick look at how much they're owned by 19% compared to 45% in Ferrari but yeah this week could be one of those weeks particularly because Ferrari on that double streak like I think they're trying to be a bit too clever, potentially, if you put Red Bull in. I could be also eating my words in a couple of days' time when Ferrari strategists just throw it in the bin again. So, who knows? Um, but, yeah. So, those are the two teams that I'm particularly looking at. And there's also the opportunity of, like, sticking to the template. But I think that's a bit boring. A bit too safe. Almost, like, yeah, too safe because there's, you know, there's hardly any streaks involved in that. And I think the streaks, although aren't the be-all and end-all, they are a very nice little bonus if you can tweak your team um, without hurting it too much in order to get those streaks in. Um, for me, yeah, a team like this, or maybe, like I said, the one with George Russell, potentially, um, definitely, definitely tempting, like George Russell, and I think pretty much, actually, the only real difference is basically George Russell and, and, and Norris, basically, isn't it? Like, there's not much, else, <laughs> there's not much else going on here, so, yeah, it depends, really. Do you think Ocon on a streak and Verstappen on a streak is going to out, uh, outscore Norris, who's not on a streak, and Russell on a double streak? It's very, kind of, very, very interesting. Um, finally poised, so let's have a look what happens in FP3. If Verstappen is back on it tomorrow in FP3, <clears throat> then I'll probably be going to the Verstappen build. If he's still looking like he's really struggling, then I could very well be going to this particular build. And yeah, um, so yeah, still room for tweaking, still room for manoeuvre. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there because this this virus infection, whatever the hell I've got going on is absolutely destroy me here so <laughs> thanks very much for watching everybody and i'll catch you yet again in a few days time for monza because it's just one race after another so yeah i'll uh, catch you soon bye bye